Hey, Matthew Stuckey here from Verity Baptist Church Philippines, uh, Verity Baptist Church Pampanga, Verity Baptist Church Manila. And um, I'm coming to you from a different location here today. My, my family's actually in the process of moving and it's probably, um, you know, about the worst possible time as things are a little bit crazy here in the Philippines right now. Things are very strict with, uh, as a result of COVID, they just went back to enhanced community quarantine, which is a strict quarantining that they started about a year ago. And so we're in the process of that. It just started today and everything. But we are in the process of moving, and so we're excited about it. We have a, a bigger place than we had before. Before it's really, it was really difficult with two kids. We were at a pretty small place. It's pretty hard with the kids running around now and everything. But anyways, giving you this missionary update, and this past week we had a total of 95 salvations between our ministries. Now, those results aren't bad. I mean, last year we would have been pretty happy for most weeks getting 95, especially when things got strict and everything. But things were really opening up in this country at the beginning of 2021, and um, we were getting a lot of salvations. Things were going great, lots of people out soul winning. The reason why we get so many soul salvations here, because we, we were having 50 plus soul winners per week between our ministries, but there's definitely churches in the U.S. that have more than 50 soul winners weekly, but don't get as many salvations. And the main reason why we were getting so many was because parks are just such a great place to preach the gospel. Door-to-door -door is more receptive than in the U.S., but it's it's not like you're going to get 20 salvations going door-to-door -door in, in many locations. You know, it's, it's definitely more receptive than in most locations of the U.S., but it's not just this, you know, spectacular thing. But in the parks, you can get a lot of salvations because there's a lot of young people. You can talk to groups, and, you know, it's, it's just... A, it's, it's just a lot more effective. It's something that you really don't have an opportunity in most places in the U.S. I did go soul winning one time just outside New York City. The first half of the day we went door to door and only had like two salvations between like 10 people. Second half of the day we had like, you know, 38 salvations or 40 salvations because we went to parks and basketball courts and everything. And you know, people were willing to listen and going door to door there in New York City, I've never seen a less receptive area where they're just slamming the door and everything. So. Just pray for our ministries though, because 95 salvations um, is not bad and everything, but things are definitely getting more strict now. We were planning to hit it hard this week for the Mega Marathon. I was hoping we could break 100 soul winners between our churches in a week, would have been, um, uh, break 100 in attendance and break 75 soul winners. I was hoping to set a record for, for number of salvations and everything like that. Those records are probably not gonna be broken this week but we're still gonna do the work as much as is possible. I'm not gonna to say too much about that publicly because we're still waiting to see what happens and we're kinda of making decisions by the day and so we're having our church members pay attention to our group chats. One change we're making this week, our Wednesday service is gonna be moved from 6 p.m. to 4 p.m. And so the government put out a curfew at 6 p.m. And so um, you know we wanna to try to abide by those laws as the best as we can best we can possibly so we're going to move the service from four, from 6 p.m. to 4 p.m. and so everyone can get home before the curfew and um, you know that's just kind of what's going on here it's definitely very interesting and just uh, you know we're, we're, we're thinking it's very strict now because it's during Holy Week and they're worried about uh, you know mass gathering at locations and things such as that for celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ so I'm hoping things are going to go back down here in a couple weeks because this is the third time in the last year and a half that our church was really like growing with attendance and we were setting new highs and things were going great and then just the strictness of the laws just really made it difficult and I understand a lot of people are going through that not just here in the Philippines in the US as well so it is what it is but um, we are hoping to hit that um, you know hit that next level and um, you know it would be great to be able to have whole families with their children out soul winning. Right now it is illegal for children under the age of 18 to be out in public. It's been that way for over a year now. And um, so it makes it very difficult with families with young children. Um, makes it difficult with families with young children because even just going about your daily lives with the moms um, getting groceries and the husband, I mean, someone has to stay home with the kids at all times. You can't take the kids with you to get groceries and things like that. So it definitely makes it difficult, but it is what it is. We're just kind of adjusting the time. Um, in the situation. Obviously a lot of people are affected financially and things like that. So it is difficult, but just pray for us because we are in ECQ right now, which is the strictest quarantine. We're hoping it will go back to normal here in a couple weeks and things will just keep opening up like they were because over these last couple weeks we've noticed people are very afraid to listen and, um, 
answer the door and stuff like that. So it's definitely getting harder. Anyways, the sermons that were preached on Wednesday, I preached in Hosea chapter 13. A lot of the chapters focus on idolatry, so I focused on that again. But I kind of did something different. I looked at the 10 reasons why the Hindus um, claim that they worship idols. Because the difference between the Hindus and the Catholics, the Hindus just freely admit that they worship idols. The Catholics deny that they worship idols. But reason number six that was given by the Hindus was that the true worshiper, when he worships the idol, becomes God. And so that's what it said, the true worshiper becomes God. And so that is what Hinduism teaches, which a lot of the Eastern philosophical beliefs uh, also teach that. So I preached on Hosea 13. We got one more chapter in Hosea. This midweek service this Wednesday, Brother Chris is going to be preaching for our church. He's preached for us several times. He does a great job. So tune into that 4 p.m. Um, Manila time. And then on Sunday, I preached Romans 13b. I preached, last week I preached on the government and authority in the first half. Second half, though, is about loving your brother. And those ideas are tied together to some degree. But I talked about, you know, loving your brother. And to really accurately love your brother, it means to keep the commandments. Because the commandments cause you to sin against your brother. So we talked about that. And um, then the other sermon, I just gave our position on communion because we took the Lord's Supper. Um, open versus closed versus close communion, which I said it really depends on what people mean by that. I'm not against other churches doing things differently. I just kind of given our position, and our position was that if you're saved and you know you don't have a major sin, that you're able to take the Lord's Supper. So we did that on on Saturday and Sunday at our churches, and we're hoping to have a great time celebrating um, Easter this weekend. Obviously, Resurrection Sunday, and uh, it's a great time. We're not really quite sure what's going to happen, so just be in prayer for us, and that's our update. And anyways, thank you, and God bless.